I, I was standing over there and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I, I've never seen what he said to me. And so I want to share this with you because as the ushers are serving you and those of you that are taking Holy Communion with us at this time, you have to understand that everything that was done to Jesus, uh, his body, whether it was beaten, bloody, bruised, whether it was before he went to the cross or while he was walking with the cross on his back or even while he was crucified, everything that was done to Jesus, he was our substitute, was for some redemptive benefit for us. And so I want you to, as you are being served by the ushers and those of you that are home, we're going to take, partake together, is you have what Jesus said. He said, this is my body. He didn't say it represents. Paul, when he was telling us how to receive Holy Communion in 1 Corinthians 11, he didn't say this represents. He said this is. So it's important that you understand that this is not just some traditional moment that we're having, but this has a very holy moment. This is the body and the blood of Yeshua. That's what the scripture says. I will not argue or even try to figure that out, but I will say this. I will have a revelation so that I understand that this isn't just a piece of bread. Otherwise, you have no understanding or value of what you're receiving. You have the body and you have the blood. I want you to look at Psalm 16, verse 10, while they are serving you. You say, well, what does this mean? I was standing there and I heard the Holy Spirit quote this, this scripture to me. And Psalm 16, verse 10, notice what it says. This was the promise given to Jesus when he was hanging on the cross. For you will not leave my soul in hell. How many know Jesus had to go down into hell? Again, he was our substitute. He even said it as the Jonah is in the belly of the whale three uh, days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth. That's where Jesus got the keys of death, hell, and the grave, stripped the devil, made a public display over him and over every demon. That's a powerful Jesus. You're, you're amazing, Jesus. I wouldn't mess with him. <laughs> you will not leave my soul in hell. Watch this. Neither will you suffer the Holy One to see what? Corruption. There was not one decay that entered into the body of the Christ. So what does that mean for us? Well, you're about to take of his body. And everything that Jesus paid for or that was done or permitted is for your, our benefit. That's why there was not any broken bones. Why? The Lord wants the body of Christ, the church, unified. But what does this mean that the Holy One, His literal body, did not suffer corruption? And I asked the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to show you. And He said, I'm going to show them today there are two benefits that they need to claim. The body and the blood. Put up Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his what? Amen. Benefits. Let's go. Verse uh, 3. Forgives us of all thy iniquities and heals us of every disease. Your covenant right, right now, you don't have to have sickness in your body. But now watch the next one. Who redeems our life from what? destruction and crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercy keep that verse up this is the body and the blood right here all right i'm going to prove it to you let's hold the body that that which he said this is my body which was broken for you this right here is psalm 103 verse 4 they can put it back up where it says you crown us that word crown is the word preservation if Jesus' literal body had no decay, it means his literal body was preserved. Which means if you take of his body, you are receiving your covenant right to Psalm 121, which is he preserves your soul. He preserves your life from evil. He preserves your coming in and your going out. You literally have preservation. It's what Jesus said in Luke 10, 19. He said, I've given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the devil. Watch this preservation. By no means shall anything harm or injure you. Then he gives us Psalm 23 and says, the Lord's your shepherd and you'll not uh, even want. What's that? Preservation. You never have lack. 
makes you lie down in green pastures. Wow, that's not barren wilderness. That's preservation. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what? It ain't going to touch me. What? That's preservation. Thy rod and thy staff, they what? Comfort me. That's preservation. That no matter what, he's going to protect me and guide me and lead me. You have the right of preservation. You need to get my new book coming out anyway. I'm not trying to sell. I'm just telling you. I've, this is going on in my spirit because I, I wrote a book in honor of God and preservation. This is your right. Psalm 103, verse 4. He crowns you. That word crown is the word preservation. He preserves you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And it's all wrapped up right here when his body did not suffer decay. You have preservation in your life. Lord, I will partake and received that. Now the next thing he said, he's redeemed your life from destruction. You know what redeeming is? Redeeming is the blood. You're redeemed because of his blood. So the blood, the right of your covenant, keeps you from destruction. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. How many know the Bible talks about the cord of three strands? The enemy primarily uses three things. He uses things to try to steal from you. He wants to kill you through sickness, disease, destruction, right? And he tries to destroy you. But there's a threefold cord that above all, you're to pray. And that is that you prosper. So don't come against prosperity message. If you, if you do, you're, you're insulting the blood that gave you the right to prosper. You're insulting the Abrahamic covenant that Jesus made yours in Galatians 3, 13 and 14. So be careful. Well, I don't like Brother Copeland, Kenneth Hagin. Stop that nonsense. They're teaching you the rights and privileges of your covenant. And you're looking to man rather than the message. Stop it. Now, I feel it from the Spirit of God. and I'm under a strong anointing here. Second, you prosper, your soul prospers. And that you're in good health. These are all the rights that you have right now. Are you ready? Say, I receive. I receive. My soul prospers. Soul prospers. I, prosper. I prosper. I am blessed, I am blessed to, be to be a blessing. And I'm healthy. And I live long. And I live strong upon this earth. Let's partake together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's stand up and let's give God a big shout of praise. Come on, let's celebrate our covenant. Those of you, come on, give a big shout. Amen. Praise God. All right. I felt like I felt like the Spirit of God said, just teach it out so that you understand, so that we can come into greater understanding and we can discern the body of Christ. Amen.